Hello again folks, we're back on this Hyundai lawnmower and uh, in the last video we found a broken belt and also a seized up gear selector mechanism and we also sharpened the blade as well and also as you can see from this pile here I've had a good scrape underneath the deck. The new belt is now in, we can now fit this, get it all back together and let's hope it works. Okay then folks, so let's try and get this belt back on but I think we need to take off this little bolt there which looks like a 10 mil because the belt actually goes behind there. So we'll just undo that, it's like a, a, a belt securing bolt. Okay. I think we need to be sticking the belt through the back there, around the pulley. The outer run here, opposite, not the pulley side, the outer run, it's just a straight run to the, uh, to the boss. So if I just do that back up now, because that belt's now in place. There we go, that's just a guide, you see. And if I get the uh, woodruff key, put that back in the uh, slot there. And then we can put the groove there, that lines up with that woodruff key. I'll slide that on. I put the belt over there like that, push that right home, like that. Now to take the slack out, I'm just going to change the gear and put it in fourth gear. That should bring everything under tension, I think. We will be adjusting the belt. So that looks like the position of the belt in place. Right, so the belt is now on. It's in fourth gear at the moment, just to put a bit of tension on it. But you may see, you may wonder how this uh, speed control thing operates. I know this lever pivots as we've just shown there on that pull, uh, pivot point there from first to fourth. But if you look at the actual pulley, can I get you in there? It lifts up, it's on a spring loaded thing. It's on a spring tension. There's a spring up here where my finger is and that actually opens up and closes like a variator. You can see that, look. You see that lifting up, look. I've opened it up now, look. So that just rides up and down on there and acts as a variator basically, so the belt moves up and down depending on which pulley speed you uh, you choose. So now we've got that boss in place, so we've just got to clip that back in place like that. We've got these two screws here. Now what I didn't show you in the last video, these two screws, when they go up they stick out of the body and you've got these two little caps here that uh, actually sit on the top of the screw so they don't get rusty. So that's what these little caps are. If you might find them dropping off, I didn't know what they was at first, but uh, I then realized that the top of the screw is nice and shiny and that's why they are there, to protect the top of the screw from getting rusty. So we'll just whack them two screws back in. One, same with the other one. There we go, just like that. We'll clip back in our little protectors. Just get that one started. Just do these two up, and there we go. Just replace our blade. Our blade's got a square cut out and an oval cut out, which matches the square and the oval on there. And also, don't forget what I said to you when you put the blade on, you shouldn't see the sharp and then that's the sharp and then that faces upwards, just like them flutes face upwards. So, let's put that back on place on there. And this bolt head I mentioned in the last video, I said it was a 17 mil, it's actually a 16 mil. Uh, it was all crapped up the head, that's why I thought it was a 17, but uh, this is a 16 mil. Let's do that up. And the dome washer, when you tighten it down, it produces the force that holds that in place. So there you go, folks. That's the underneath done. I've given it a scrape out, as you can see. That was all the rubbish I got out from underneath it, which I'll clear away in a second. And these two little caps, as I was telling you about, if you look in there, you'll see the two screws sticking up. All they do is literally just screw on by hand and just protect the threads there. So do make sure you put them back on, folks. And there's the uh, second one as well. Right, okay, that's that done. Right, okay folks, so that's that now. I've just cleared up that mess underneath there. We can put this back up onto its wheels now. 
Just don't do me bungee. And bring it up. There we go. Now we're probably going to have to adjust the gear selector cable uh, because I did notice when it was in fourth gear, the belt was still quite slack. And what that means is you normally have to elongate the adjuster. I can see the adjuster at the moment is wound right the way up on its hilt. So that wants to be lengthened. And one other thing I've realized here as well is that these cables here go underneath. I think they're supposed to come along the top there. So I'll have to undo that handle there and uh, poke them through here so they're on the top. And it's the same with these ones there. Otherwise, what you can do when you fold that handle over to store it or to transport it about, you'll stretch these cables and it looks like one's probably been stretched there anyway. So I'm gonna just undo these nuts there, just get these cables so they're sitting above, first of all, and then we'll elongate that and uh, hopefully adjust the belt up. That looks a bit better folks that's as it should be the cable clamp was on the outside there but as you remember the cables was on the inside there so just put that right for the owner that one was a little bit more tricky i had to take the battery out or loosen the battery out because that cable that goes around the back just was a bit too short but i got it there in the end anyway so uh that leaves us now with these cables sitting on top so when you fold the handles over they shouldn't crease up and damage the cables so that's the proper way they should go folks so as you can see the adjuster here I've got to undo the lock nut there and then that's a 10 mil and then hold back with an 8 mil just to elongate that and then make sure I'm getting the first gear still because first gear is the one that has the travel where it needs to if you have it too long you can't get it in the first gear apparently so I'm in fourth gear I'll hold back with an 8 mil and just undo that lock nut and then start to undo or lengthen the cable it was quite slack, so I'm going to take it down a fair bit at first. Again, we may have to persevere. And, uh, we don't even know whether the drive works yet. There might be a problem with the gearbox, but uh, right, so we can get it in the first still, we can get it in the second, third, and also fourth. So I'm happy that we can lock that up for the moment. There we go. And try and give it a start up. I've left the uh, rear trap door open at the back there just so that I can see if anything uh, comes off or whatever. Make sure you do clear up anything under your lawnmower folks because in my previous video a spanner nearly got sucked in. Right okay then so start from cold down the bottom. Better put the spark plug cap back on otherwise it ain't gonna fire is it? Like that. Pull the dead man handle up. Here it starts. No drive. Let's see if we can identify anything. See, that's that variable. Pulley, which seems to be a bit slack to be honest with you right okay folks it's another day now after a good look at that pulley although the gearbox is working fine that pulley mechanism the, ver the very variable pulley at the top seems to be buggered so i had no option but to go out and uh, buy a new gearbox and this is the thing here and i don't know whether you can see or not but this gear mechanism is a lot more firmer than the one that's already there and there's plenty of spring tension under that and this one's actually got a bigger spring on it so um there seems to be a, an issue with that one and uh, that's causing the issue with the tension of the belt making the belt slip and hence it probably wore through because it was slipping so much so this gearbox here 
come in at about £67, uh, which I thought was actually a good buy, actually, because I thought there'd be double that price. So we've got a new gearbox to go in, and that means I've got to get the old gearbox out. So I've just jacked it up in the moment. You could tip this over on the side. That would probably mean draining the petrol out and draining the oil out. I'm going to try and do it without doing that. So um, first of all, put you on a bit of time lapse. I'm going to take the wheels off, unclip the axles, and drop the axle out, and then we'll put the new one in. So let's play it by ear. See you in a minute. I stand by you when you're falling When the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together What goes up must come down There's lots of friendly faces all around There we go, folks. That's the rear axle out. Quite a simple thing to take out, actually. But um, let's have a look at this now and see how floppy, as you can see, this look. This variator sprocket is. That's not tensioning anything up. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. I've just got to take this apart now. Get the um, the old one out. Put the new one in the handle mechanism. So pretty straightforward job, this, folks. Obviously, take the outer wheel nut off first of all. There's a washer that sits behind that when you pull the wheel off. On the shaft you've got one of these which is a, like a sprung washer. So that comes off next. You then unhook the arm. You then remove a circlip on the front there which is one of these. That comes off of there. That means that you can extract the gear cog. Now on the back of the gear cog you'll have a little pin there that goes through and locates in there make sure you don't mix these up folks because these I think are handed so this one wouldn't go on the other side wouldn't work properly because it would spin the wrong way around so that that comes up there and behind that you've got one of these washers so that comes off as well once you've taken that off you can then pull your your back plate off remove this pin out of the shaft uh, like that and then that frees off your your, your front wheel adjuster mechanism and that's basically that off you've then got two eight mils there to remove which hold that uh, mechanism on which i've just taken off there and underneath the motor you can probably see the hole there on this side you've got a little l bracket which i'll show you there it is there which sits under there which bolts to the deck to hold it in place so if you don't take that bolt out you can't actually withdraw this and the other side is exactly the same and as you can see, I've got two screw trays, one that side and one for that side. So everything's actually identical to what I've just shown you there. I've just wedged the flap up with a, a bit of a copper pipe there. It allows me to gain access to disconnect the cable, which you need to disconnect off the arm. And then, because I've got it like this, I've not had to drain any fluids out whatsoever and tip the mower up on its side and risk getting all the fluids everywhere. And it's literally just dropped out from underneath. So let's get a closer look at these now. Let's get that over there. So that's how it's going to sit in our lawn mower. Like that. Slight variation. I would imagine this is an updated one, as I say, because I don't think this mower has had a new gearbox in it. I think the chap told Jimmy that um, he'd had this from new. So as you can see, look, that, that's really naff, that look. Compared to that solid thing there, this is uh, possibly the cause of the issue. Although the gearbox, as I said to you, is working, as we did check earlier on, as you can see. But there's no way that's tensioning the belt enough to cause it to slip. Look, look at that, look. Absolutely ludicrous. So, I'm going to take this out now, get this back in, and then hopefully we should be able to put out, tension the belts up, and everything should be okay. Right, so... Those ends there, these plastic ends, they do float about, look. So I'm hoping that I can just get them out. Probably what's got to happen here is I've got to clean some of this crap off of there, look. Let's get a blade. This plastic thing needs to slide up this shaft, as you can see there. So if I just 
scrape some of this off of here. This plastic bit should be able to slide up that shaft a bit and allow me to take out the uh, the motor itself. So yeah, here we go. Look, is that coming up now? I don't think there's any more. I think what's happening there here as well, folks, is the um, in the end of that is a bearing. I think the bearing's coming up against the rust now, and that's what's stopping it. So what I might have to do is to take the bearing out, and to do that, I've got to remove a circlip that's still, as you can see, on that shaft, on the long shaft. There we go. Just take that um, circlip off there. That's the inner circlip. There's two circlips there on that shaft, folks. So the the outside one we've already taken off. So let's just keep that there for a minute. Now what that hopefully should do be allow me to pull that bearing out of there if I can. I've got to get the bearing out of its plastic housing. All right, there we go. Just forced it enough, folks. Look, just got that out enough. I'll push that dead on. There we go. Right. So that I should now hopefully. Yeah, we'll just withdraw that motor away from that bracket. I'm keeping it that way around so we know what way it goes in. So I need these ends off. That's why I need it to take that circlip off there. That should come off here now. Pretty straightforward. That goes on to, again, the long shaft. So that goes on to there like that. And this one here, you see the bearings popped out on that one, look. That should come off with that shaft there, like that, and that goes back on the same orientation to the new shaft, and that's that. So this little baby, which seems to be totally knackered there, look at that. Look. You can see where the belt's been rubbing on there, actually on the inside, on that centre spindle there. That doesn't look right at all, does it? So that's coming out. This comes back in this way. Like that. Just give that blade a bit of a clean off look. A bit of a clean off. I mean some people probably put this back on as it was, but uh, while you're here, you might as well attend to it. There we go. Like that. Right, so all that should do now is push back into there, like that, and that should go into there like that. I'll put that circlip back on that inner groove. Here we go. Just like that. And one thing I should have noticed was do measure, hold it next to each other, make sure everything is in the correct position. I'm looking at the grooves. Yep, yeah, that's fine. The cable comes in the same way through there. That'd be those. So one thing not to forget, folks, is to take off that little bracket that bolts to the deck and put it back on your new gearbox. So move that over there. That just sits underneath there. There's the hole for it. it. Goes back on exactly the same way. Right, so there we go. That's that back on. Right, I'm going to put this back in, folks, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, so we've got these two bolts done up 
through there, the same the other side as well. I've put that little L bracket on underneath. I haven't tightened it up yet. And I'm just gonna get the uh, circlip now on the shaft, the inner circlip. So that literally just goes over and pushes into place. Should hear it click in in a minute. There we go. That's that one in. So I'm gonna do the same the other side. So we've got that one on the other side there, as you well know. So I think we can get that arm back on for the adjuster. So I've just levered that back onto its part uh, shaft there and put the R pin back on. The adjuster's on its lowest setting, I think. That means that you, you can easily sort of hook that on there. So that's on now. And what we can do now is now put this rear cover back on like that. Just sit that over there like that and get that final 10 mil in there to hold the rear back plate on. There we go. Then we've got the big washer. Just give that a bit of a clean up. There we go, that goes on there next, like that. We've then got our little pin to go through our hole. Again, clean these up, put some new grease on them. You might as well if you're there. That goes in there like that. So just sit that in there. And again, yet again, I'm gonna clean this little sprocket up. Again, these are handed folks, so this one can't go on the other way. We'll just give it a bit of a clean first of all. And uh, we'll re put a little bit of grease back on that again. Just ensures that mechanism runs smoothly. There we go, all part of maintenance is folks, cleaning stuff before you put it back on. Right, so that's that. And I've just got some standard water repellent. White grease here, folks, don't need a lot of it. Just to whack on the inside there like that. There we go. And that tapered side faces inwards. And it should latch up, there we go. See, it sort of only spins one way and it locks up on the other way. So that's that. We then want our final circlip to go on to hold that in place. There we go. It can't come off then, you see. And the last bit of kit we've got is our wavy washer which goes on the large shaft. We've got our wheel to go back on. Like that, push it back in. The washer, and also our nut. With our 13 mil socket. Done up. There you go. Finally, refit your your wheel cover, and that's that. So I'm just going to tighten up that little L bracket underneath now because I left that loose until I got them circlips on. I'll tighten that up. That's everything done underneath then, and I'm just going to refit the wheel, which is going to be exactly the same as what you've just seen there, and then we can give it a try. Right, folks, all back together. I did try and charge this battery up just to see if it would uh, work. It wouldn't take a charge, so um, I'll have to put it back on anyway. So let me just get this on. It normally charges via a little charging port there. Look, and these two cables connect directly to the battery. There we go. And that's back to normal, folks. Right, let's get it off the lift. So don't forget, we might have to adjust this uh, belt up. We'll only know that when we get outside. All right, let's get it out. Come on, go on, away. Right, let's see, folks. Choke on. Well, 
Well, it's not the fastest, folks, so uh, I think it's going to need adjustment. Seems like there's a bit of belt slip on it still, folks, but um, I'm going to play about with the adjustment on it and uh, get all four speeds working correctly. Right, that's it folks. I've just got a little bit of adjustment to do and uh, everything on this one should be okay then. So thanks very much for watching. We got there in the end and as I say, gearbox sprocket looks like it was well knackered and uh, that weren't tension in the belt up at all. Plus we had that seized up mechanism as well, which we saw in the first video. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.